I know it's been a bit of a break, but I'm back again with a new video today. We're going to explore tools to help creators keep creating and making money. It's the start of an exciting new series where I show you these tools where you can take a boring database on Airtable or Google Sheets and turn it into a website in minutes. The first tool we are covering is Polly. So let's talk about Pori. It's big promises. You connect your Airtable and it magically gives you a website. The best part, you can just update your Airtable and it'll update the website. Once you built it, you don't need to redesign your website to update it. Let's take a step back for a minute. You know that all websites have data which is stored in a database. Let's take CNN for example, which gets millions of visitors monthly. The actual news articles are stored in a database, but CNN editors edit it themselves, creating new articles as more news breaks, and that updates the website automatically. This is an example of a system called a CMS, short for a content management system. So you may not be running this giant news outlet, but what do you have data stored in Airtable or Google Sheets, which all of us have, and you want to visualize it in a website. Enter this whole new section of tools, one of them called Pori, which we're talking about today. I want to call out, this is not for updating complex content like blog posts. I mean, think of it, it'll be such a pain to put like a thousand word blog post in a spreadsheet. For those situations, please work with the CMS. So what is this good for? Think of directly like websites, like for movies, IMDB, information websites, light e-commerce websites, like a simple Etsy store, running your own book club, or putting a collection of recipes online. So let me go ahead and show you all the cool stuff you can build on Pori. This is a craft beer base I'm going to use. Essentially, it's a list of craft beers, which would be great to visualize in a website. When we look at the templates Pori has, you see these six. I wish Pori would give more of a description of what can be done with each. But no, that's what I'm here for. Here is how I would choose a template. Understand what you want to display and what your base looks like. Also, keep in mind that you can add or remove functionality once you choose something. Basically, all I'm saying is choose a broad starting point and a design you like. You don't need to overthink it or obsess over the perfect template. On a broader level, there are two types of templates. One is where you don't need users to create accounts and then there are ones that do. Among the six, Members Portal and Gated Content are the ones that fit the bill if you want users to create accounts. Both are actually similar in what they do. They just have a different design. So just go by the design you like. Essentially, with both these templates, you can access certain areas of the site or certain content only if users create accounts. The other templates are all serving the same basic purpose, but differ in how they display the information and what kind of information they are best suited for. The directory template is the most concise way of displaying information. In this case, it's a high-level view of people, and when you click on each card, you can see more information. One thing which the directory template has is a button on each card on the home page, which you can customize to any link, any social media account, websites, or even portfolios. For job boards, the information you want to display is more text heavy or descriptive. You want to give the users an understanding of the job on the home page itself without having to go to a different site. So in the job board, every card can be expanded to fit a fair amount of job description. If that is something you need, this is a perfect category. Now this can fit recipes, books, movies, anything where you want to add more text in the description. Resources and events are pretty similar in the way they show the main information, except how filtering of items is displayed. With resources, you have a drop down to choose from, while events that are tags, you just need to filter items. Honestly, that's minor and can be customized really easily once you're in the template. Another added functionality in the events template is it lets you capture someone's email address for a newsletter. Think of any resources you want to share with people. Maybe it's COVID-19 resources to help your community. This kind of template is perfect. I've logged into Pori and I'm going to choose a template. I'll go for one in a similar category, a restaurant menu. Once we named the app, then we are dropped into the Pori editor for us to customize it. Let's go and connect our Airtable. We'll select our base and then the actual table. Now that is done, let's map the fields so we can control what data will appear on each of these cards. Each card has a title and subtitle. The title in our case matches the name column in our Airtable. The subtitle, I would like it to match the type of glassware. The gallery field is the image field which shows up. 
in this case, it's our attachments field. Now it's starting to come alive visually. Let's save this. Now it takes us to the detailed view. We can also configure what happens when we click on each peer. I'm happy with the way it looks right now. Let's go and check out what the site looks like so far. It's pretty cool, right? All right, next up, let's set up our filters. We'll go back to the Airtable setup. We'll select fetch from a table because we already have the data in our spreadsheet. Now here's the thing you need to know about setting your filters if you want Pori to pull them from your table. They have to be single select or multi-select fields. For example, aroma is a multi-select field on our table. If you look at the glassware column here, it does look like a multi-select field, but on close inspection, it's actually a linked field. So Pori won't actually do a good job of pulling this data. We'll define the view it's pulling from and hit save. Now, if we take a look at a site now, we'll see Poi detected three possible filters. If you open Glassware, there's no surprise, but we'll see it doesn't correctly detect it because it was a linked field. Same thing with attachments. It's an attachment field, so Poi didn't find anything. Let's remove this. This is a little unintuitive. To remove a filter from a page, you actually have to select the filter tag none. Now one more way to show filters is instead of a dropdown, you can also have tags. Let's select that instead and then you can actually filter by those elements by clicking on the right tag. I'll remove the glassware tag too. Now let's see what the results look like. I'll give it a name. And that's what the site looks like so far. All the filters are working, making progress. If you try to search by ale, you'll see the search bar isn't working yet. That is one more thing we need to set up. And this has to be set up under the Airtable setup section. Under search settings, you can specify the fields you want to search by. I'll do name and description because that's what I think is needed. Now when I search, I'll only see beers with ale showing up. Finally, we can edit the text on any section like we do for any site. I'll do that for all these text sections here. Let's fast forward. And we're good to go. Let's look at the final site. Text looks good. We can filter and search. I think we just spent a few minutes, but we've converted an Airtable into a website. So what did I like about Pori? It did what it was supposed to do. I had never explored this category of tools before and it was pretty easy to get something functional. So what didn't I like? Okay, I think two things. First, I didn't find the setup to be as intuitive. I mean, it took me a while to set up search and filters. The final site looks good, but I think the design for inbuilt templates and what you get out of the box can be really improved. Also, I found a super nice website called Maven, which is built on Pori. You can get to this level of professional websites with Pori. You just have to put in a lot of custom design work. To start off, Pori has a free plan and there's absolutely no stopping you from trying it out. The free plan won't let you publish on your own domain. You'll still have to use the .pori app subdomain, but that doesn't stop you from just seeing if it works for you. Also, the free plan only lets you create one page websites. So if you want to create websites of multiple pages or use its more advanced features like user accounts, you have to be on a paid plan. The paid plan for creating multiple pages starts at $12 a month. To create user accounts, you have to pay $39 a month, which is still really expensive. The $12 a month price point is okay, but I would say make sure you test drive Pori on the free plan to make sure it works for you. Give Pori a spin and of course if you have any questions hit me up in the comments. I'm going to explore more tools similar to Pori. 
Please subscribe if you haven't already to stay in the loop. See you soon with another video. Bye.